Hello my kings, hello my queens. Before we get into today's thought, just allow me to take the time to salute you for the caliber of person that goes against the grain. We usually come to YouTube to get some entertainment, get a couple of tutorial videos on how to do certain things, and yet, here you are, you clicked on the Unlimited Soul channel which is a tribe of people that are not afraid to self-introspect so that we become better versions of ourselves. People that are serious about their transformation. So for that, I salute you. And to those of you that are coming here because you are supporting me on my journey, I also salute you for supporting someone else's dream and taking my dream seriously. Today's thought is a bit uh, personal for me because it's something that I struggled with for a while. So maybe this video is more for me than it is for you, I don't know. Uh, but we are going to be um, discussing how to deal with failure. And the reason for that is, you know, the journey to building legacies, the journey to pursuing a purpose-driven life, self-actualization, transformation, building for our dreams, is a journey that is filled with oscillations of emotions and experiences that can leave you high on one end and you really feel like you're killing it, you know what you're doing, and then the next minute you hit so um, you go down so low to a point where you even question what you're doing and you question whether it's even worth it. Listen, if that's not your experience and you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you're just one of the lucky few and maybe you need to tell us your secret. But for some of us, like myself, you think you got the recipe for success and then you put in the work and it just becomes the next best thing. So you decide, okay, I'm gonna put in the work again. And then it's an epic fail. And then there's also one of my personal favorites where you know you were mediocre, you know you were winging it, you know you didn't put in the work, but it just becomes this next great thing. And so sometimes that can leave us confused in terms of what exactly is the recipe for success or for greatness and while I still believe and maintain that the road to greatness and success is not always going to be simple and straightforward but there are certain things that we can learn from the people that have gone ahead and um, succeeded in their journeys people that we regard as great that we recognize them for their hard work and their success um, one of the things that I've come to realize is that most of though, even though their journeys may have been unpredictable and filled with hardships, most of them have some sort of underlying commonality in terms of their mindsets and their principles. And those, and those are some of the things that we can explore and adopt so that we also know how to pursue our greatness. And so one of the things that I've discovered is their attitude or their mindset towards failure. Now, if I were to ask you to just come up with a quote or something inspirational that has to do with failing and succeeding, chances are you can probably go through your timeline on your uh, social media and you will find something that you've posted about success and failure. And if I were to ask you to maybe mention one or two uh, prominent people that you know have failed uh, previously or have had some disappointments and setbacks but have achieved their goals chances are you'd give me a whole lot of, pe a whole lot of people a whole list of people and already that tells us that we know that failure is not the end but the question is when it comes to our personal lives and when we are dealing with failure when we are faced with life itself, do we know how to apply those principles and those mindsets? And do we know how to then shift the feelings of failure and convert it into something that we can use towards our success? 
And the reason I'm asking is because for me personally, I knew all the theories about how failure is not the end. But it, when it came to actually applying it, I struggled because I still saw failure as a reflection of me, not as a task or a project that failed. I felt that I needed to explain myself to people because I saw it as shame or embarrassment that needed to be hidden. And as I invested in my personal development and transformation, I then realized that my perception or my perspective on failure had suddenly started to shift. And those are some of the things that I want to share with you. And I am by no means saying that I am an expert, but I'm just merely sharing my personal experiences and what helped me to move from seeing it as a negative thing into something that was positive that I could now use um, as a stepping stone into my success. So allow me to share a personal story. Um, a couple of months ago, a group or a team was put together and I was part of the team of people that were supposed to do a certain project and for me it was such a big deal because I felt like this type of project was exactly what I needed to catapult into my next level in my career. So of course I was excited and before the project kicked off I started investing in myself because one of the things that I had set out was that yes the project was going to help me grow tremendously in my career but also I wanted the project to be something that would help me to grow internally so I remember even declaring to myself that by the time this project is done I don't want to be able to recognize myself because that's how much this would have just transformed me in the process. So I started, uh, before the project started, I invested in myself, um, I prepared myself mentally, I prepared myself physically, I prepared myself emotionally and spiritually to a point where I even started shifting things around in my house to accommodate the long hours that I would put into the project. And then when it kicked off, I was present I was on fire and I remember to a point where even when I started to see old tendencies building up so areas of weaknesses or my fears I would stretch myself because I knew what this project was supposed to do for me and I constantly stretched myself I would even put in um, extra hours and put some personal sacrifices in there because I I was serious about this you know and when the project ended I didn't get what I wanted I was still in the same place in terms of my career it, it just it didn't do anything for me or at least that's how I felt and <laughs> you know after all that I had put in I honestly was quite broken and in my personal space I you know I cried a bit okay so maybe I cried a lot okay there were a lot of tears but as I continue to take the time out to just process my feelings and go through my notes to check um, where I went wrong from what was required of me, what were my personal goals in this that I set out for myself to do. And when I realized that I did everything that I was supposed to do and that I set out to do, but I still didn't get the results. <laughs> Oh man, I was gutted and I felt I needed to take a bit more time again to try and process all of this, you know. And this time around what I realized was that my perspective was changing quite quickly to a point where I was even starting to celebrate. I was celebrating this whole project and what I'd seen as failure. and. This is the reason why. When it comes to 
failure and disappointments they come in a lot of um, shapes and forms so whether it could be a failed relationship um, a failed task or project or maybe some bad decisions and mistakes that we make out of ignorance whatever the case is there's always something to take away so there's always something to learn so even if it feels like at that time that it was time wasted generally it's not so once you've gone through the emotions um, and the disappointment and in my case the field tears um, then you're able to see the hidden treasures so I remember I once posted on my social media Instagram and Twitter something along the lines of don't be afraid to start afresh because this time you're not starting from scratch you're starting from experience and those are some of the hidden treasures that you find in what we see as failed projects or relationships or whatever the case is so I don't know if you remember um, part of the one of the videos that I did um, a couple of weeks ago which is called beautiful beginnings I mentioned how I started this channel about three years ago and how it was just an epic fail but even though it failed um, there were so many things that I had learned from that there were so many takeaways because when I redid the project again when I restarted this um, channel again I learned from my mistakes and it means that this time around I was not starting from scratch I know what to look out for I know my mistakes I know my shortcomings and I've done my research and I'm a different person and so I will do things differently this time around so it means that I'm not starting from scratch I'm starting from experience and those are some of the, the treasures that you find in our past failures and disappointments is our mistakes and the learnings that we take from that. But what about in the case, like my project, where you take the time out to assess where you had gone wrong and then you realize that you did everything that you had set out to do, but it still fails. What made me change my perspective was the fact that I, number one, celebrated the fact that I was part of something bigger than myself. So sometimes it's important that we remove ourselves from everything being about me all the time. And so if the project um, works out and it works out for other people, you're still able to clap for them and congratulate them. That's number one. Number two, I celebrated the fact that even, yes, I was part of something greater than myself, that I played a role because while I was in the project, I was fully invested. So I knew that I had given it my absolute best at that time, according to my skill sets. I gave it everything and I knew that I had constantly stretched myself. So I celebrated the caliber of person that I was, the fact that I had committed genuinely to it. And I also celebrated the fact that because the project was faced with so many challenges, that gave me all the reasons to walk away. I didn't. Because I committed, I saw it till the end. Even when I was disappointed, I made sure that I saw it up until the end. And so I celebrated that. And one of the other things that I started realizing in my space of gratitude was that one of the things that I set out to do was to be a completely different person once the project was done. And guess what? I achieved that because by the time I was done, I saw the growth in me. I saw how it had transformed me. To the people around me, they were able to attest how great, or rather, how much I had grown from this. And so I celebrated that because I achieved what I wanted internally. As for the external factors of growing in my career, I did not achieve that, but I celebrated because sometimes you don't always have control when it comes to external factors. And external factors could be people's opinions, 
that you cannot control. Sometimes it's not even their opinions, but it's actually the standards that have been set. So maybe you might have done your best, but it was not according to the standards that were set. Someone else might have been better. I mean, let's look at competitions where people leave their hearts on stage, but there's only one winner. It doesn't mean that maybe they were lacking or whatever the case is, but they probably just didn't meet those requirements. So those are some of the external factors. External factors could be lack of resources or I don't know, but could be just a whole lot of things that you face outside of your control. In that case, you always have to ask yourself two questions. One, did I do what I was supposed to do? Yes. And did I do it to the best of my ability and skill sets at that time? Did I pour into it? Did I believe in it? Yes. If those are your answers, then you better celebrate. You better celebrate the fact that you did it and failed. Because guess what? Failing simply means that you're doing something which is far greater and far more noble than not doing anything at all. And it actually reminds me of the story of Peter who was on a boat with his peers. And um, Peter saw something that he wanted and he set out to do it. So his peers stayed, but he decided to go and do it. And sometimes that's the case with us. We see something that we want and we don't stop there. We pursue it and we go after it. So we step out. Whether we're stepping out with our flesh screaming because we're all nervous and scared and all the fears in the world you can think of. Or we're stepping out with excitement and oomph because we feel like this is the next best thing. But the important thing is we stepped out. And then along the journey, then the winds, the storms, they come. And those winds and those storms could be that now we're starting to see how difficult this task is. Or the self-doubt, the screaming voices in our heads that are telling you that you're not skilled enough, you're not good enough, um, you're not experienced enough. And we listen to those voices in our heads. And those are the winds. And we listen to or we see circumstances. So the winds could be your circumstances that are telling you that you don't have the resources to continue with this project. And we listen. The winds could be the people that are back on the boat. Yeah? That could be telling you, there could be naysayers asking you what you think you're doing. Or they could be the experts that we trust who are telling you how difficult what you're doing is and we listen. Or it could be that the voices from the boat are people that matter to us. And they might be people who have been disappointed in life and now they are projecting those onto us. It could be people that mean well and actually care, but they don't understand your journey. And we listen, and then the fear builds up. And like Peter, we fall. But here's the thing, falling and failing is not dying. So you can get back up again. And the interesting thing is the Bible doesn't describe how Peter walked back, how his disposition was. Did he walk back with his head held high, excited, or proud of the fact that he actually did something while the others stayed on the boat? Or did he walk back with his head hung low in shame because he felt like he had failed and that maybe he needed to explain himself? It doesn't explain, but knowing what I know now and what I've been through, if I was Peter, I was going to walk back with a bit of swag. 
Because you know what? I saw something. I didn't stop there. I didn't stop by dreaming and fantasizing. I was not all talk. I stepped out. Despite the fear and the anxiety, I stepped out and I did it. I fell, but I didn't stay there. I didn't give up. I got back up again, just like Peter. And when you continue to read this Bible story, it's, it's actually clear in describing that the winds and the storms only stopped when he got on the boat. So, in other words, he faced the same storms, the same circumstances, the same challenges that made him fall. But this time around, he was not intimidated. He didn't fall because this time he had experience, he knew how to deal with them. And, and those are some of the treasures that we find when we fail and we get back up. And we retrace our steps to see where we had gone right and where we had gone wrong. And we do it again. So whatever it is that you need to do, go ahead, do it. Go ahead and pick up that project that you had shelved because you are giving yourself all sorts of reasons and excuses. Pick it up again and do it. And this time, if it works out, <laughs> you better celebrate and shout on the rooftops. But if it fails, fail forward. If it fails, don't shrink. Don't shrink back in shame. Because this time, you know. You know that you are doing something towards your dreams and your purposes. And, your, and towards your greatness and building your legacy. You are doing something. And you better celebrate even those failures. Because it means that the next time you pick up on that project, when you take time out to see where you went wrong and where you went right, you know what to do. So if you fail, it's okay. I mean, you know where you went wrong. And you're going to pick up a book so that you improve and you get more knowledge or you're gonna take up another course. Even if you don't have the money, you can go on Udemy. You can take up a masterclass with someone who's already experienced and has walked the smile. But whatever it is, we don't stop. And this is why I love what Robert Kawasaki says in his book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. He says, failure inspires winners, but failure defeats losers. So for us, when we deal with failure, we know what to do. We know our shortfalls. We know our, we know our strengths. We capitalize on the strengths and we work on those weaknesses. That is who we are as the unlimited soul. We, we don't stop at nothing. We don't stop for anyone. We have stubborn faith because we know we're unlimited. Nothing stops us, including ourselves. We're not gonna stand, we're not gonna get in the way of our own greatness because of whatever fears and um, anxieties and inferiority complexes that we have. We tackle them and we win. So even if you fall over and over, you pick yourself up over and over. I have lost the number of times I have failed, but here I am. And the reason is I don't give up. I can't because this thing inside of me won't let me. My greatness won't let me give up. It wants to come out, you know? I was actually telling my friend um, the other day on WhatsApp and I was like, look, I know I'm gonna reach my greatness and I know I'm not gonna die young. But if it were to happen, which it won't, I just want people to say, you know what? She, she never stopped trying. She never stopped trying. Let that be the least thing that they say about you. Is that, Oksalayo, that he never stopped. Oksalayo, she never stopped. Because sometimes we need to tell our kids and those closest to us 
to continue to push. But if they don't see it in us, and they don't feel that energy in us, then what exactly are we telling them? Let our actions speak louder. Let them hear us. We are unlimited soul, baby. We don't stop at nothing. So you better go out there. Let them hear you roar. Let them see you move. Because you are unlimited. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I think the next couple of weeks are going to be a bit more intimate. And I am hoping that you're still going to engage uh, with whatever it is that we're doing. If you have any questions or maybe you like to reach out to me, you can do it on my channel so you can send me a DM. But also I do have my email address um, on, on the channel itself. So if you go there under contacts, you should be able to find it. So I am reachable um, if you need any assistance. Uh, but other than that, I do wish you all the best. And I hope that you continue to share this with whoever needs Needs it subscribe and hit the notifications button like the video because guess what you helping a sister grow up in here you know this is all what it's all about um, so let's keep the positive vibes going I love you and I wish you all the best in life God bless